Measures are a great way to create pre-staged calculations that can then be dropped into any visual. Now, because measures are basically table agnostic, meaning they can be placed in any table regardless of the fields that they're calculating, most people place the measures in the same table as the fields that that measure is manipulating. Now, if you create a lot of measures across many tables, it can be challenging to locate a specific measure. So something I like to do is to create a dedicated measures table. This table will hold all of my measures and I'll organize them in subfolders instead of organizing them within the tables of the data. This way we can take a data model that looks like this where the measures are blended in with the actual data fields and turn it into something like this where all the measures are in a dedicated measures table and then organized by folders. If you're working with measures in Power BI, I'm gonna show you how to create this dedicated measures table and these subfolders for organization. If you happen to be working with Power Pivot and the data model in Excel, measures can be created here as well, but instead of lumping them in with the actual data fields, let's create a dedicated measures table and place the measures in that location. So we'll see how to do this in Power BI and we'll see how to do this in Excel. Feel free to download these starter files and solution files from the link in the video description so you can follow along or just open up the solution file and see the finished product. So beginning in Power BI, I have my two tables, one for employee information, one for sales, and I have a variety of measures already created in each of these tables. To create the dedicated measures table on the home ribbon, we'll go up in the data section and click enter data in the create table dialog box. We'll go down to the lower left where we'll give the table a name, and we'll call this measures. Now, because I'd like my measures table to appear at the beginning of the list of tables in my data model, I'll preface measures with an underscore because in an alphabetical sort of the table names, the underscore is essentially less than the letter A. I'll click load, and now I have a measures table. And if I open that up, it's got an empty column. Also notice the icon, it's the generic table icon. That's gonna change in just a minute. Now from this point forward, when you go to create a new measure, you would go to this measures table, right click and choose new measure, and then write whatever measure it is you're interested in. I'm going to cancel that. But what I'd like to do is take my existing measures and migrate them into this dedicated measures table. Now unfortunately, I can't come over here and grab one of these measures and just drag and drop it into this table. That would be nice if I could. So what I need to do is go over here to the model view. I'll move my measures table here, stretch it out. In my employee info table, I'll select the oldest birth date measure. And then in the properties of that measure, I'll change its home table from the employee info table to the underscore measures table. And you can see how that's been moved over. I'll do the same thing for youngest birth date. Switch that over to the measures table. Now to take all these measures in my sales table, you don't have to do this one at a time. You can do this in bulk. So I could click average sales, hold down control, and then click another measure and another measure. And if those were separated, you could then bring them over in one stroke by coming over here and changing the home table. But since I want all of these, I'll click average and do a shift click on sum of sales and then just get the whole list. Back in the properties, I'll change the home table from sales to measures. So now I can make these a bit smaller and looking over in my tables list, this is a lot more organized. Now going back into the report view, this does look a little bit better, but it's still got some issues. One is I've got this empty column one as an object in the measures table, and that's just a byproduct of having originally created the table. So to get rid of that, I'll just right click on it and delete it from the model. Now by getting rid of that dead column, notice it also changed the icon in this object. So this is no longer a table object, it is a measures object because it contains nothing but measures. So we get a slightly different icon. So if you had all of these in a collapsed state, you could instantly tell which ones are tables and which ones are measures. Now, in terms of organization, I have my calendar-based measures mixed in with my aggregation measures. You can organize these into folders and even subfolders. To do that, we go back to the model view. And if you want to do this in bulk, I'm going to click oldest birth date, hold down control, select the youngest birth date. They're both going into the measures table, but there's another option here called display folder. And this is where you can organize these into folders and subfolders. So for the two selected, I'm going to create a folder called dates. Now you won't see anything in this model view, but you will notice there is now a subfolder called dates under this measures table. And those two measures have been placed in that folder. For the remaining measures, average, hold down control, count, max, min, profit, sum. I'll go to display folder and I'm going to call these aggregates. Let's collapse these other tables so we can focus. And notice now I have two folders, one for aggregates, one for dates. 
and then the applicable measures are placed in each folder. If you need to create more levels in this organizational structure, like let's say that I wanted to put count, max, and min into a subfolder, I'll go select count, max, min, and then the display folder will be aggregates slash scalers. And you can just keep going with this organizational structure to meet your organizational needs. Now keep in mind the measures table is basically a data island. It's not to be connected using relationships with any of the other tables. So don't panic if you open up someone's data model and you see this data island out here. It's likely it's just a measures table. Building the dedicated measures table in Excel has a few more steps than it does in Power BI, and there's also a quirk or two you need to be mindful of. Now in this file, I already have some measures, which means I have a data model. Now I could go ahead and create the measures table and then move these measures into that table, but it's highly recommended that you create the measures table before you add any other tables to the model. The reason you want to do this is because the default behavior whenever you're creating new measures is to place them in the first table that was created in the data model. And since my sales table was the first table added to the data model, all new measures default to that location, and then you'd have to move them. So let's first see how to create the measures table and move existing measures. Then I'll show you how to create the table from the beginning and then start creating your measures. The first thing we have to do is get into the data model. If I go up to the data tab, I have a button here called data model. Now, if I'm going to be working with measures, I would really like to have the power pivot ribbon, which has the data model button plus other buttons. So if you don't have the power pivot ribbon, just go to any button or tab in the Excel interface, right click and choose customize the ribbon, and then scroll down over here on the right until you find Power Pivot. Give that a check and hit OK. So on the Power Pivot ribbon, I've got that same Manage Data Model button plus other things. So we'll go to Manage. Let me stretch this column out. And you can see the total cost and total sales measures that I already have. So these measures are currently in the sales table. I have no other tables. If I go up to the ribbon and click Diagram View, I can see my lonely little sales table. And those two measures are here. Now getting out of the data model, to create a new empty table in the model, just go to any cell on the spreadsheet that doesn't have anything in it that's not directly connected to something else like another table, and go up and click Add to Data Model. We'll hit OK. And now we have this empty table called Table 2. I'll right-click on it and rename it to Underscore Measures. Now, ultimately, we're going to create some additional measures, but we want to move the existing measures from the Sales table into this table. So with that Measures table created, we'll get out of the Data Model view, now back in Excel, we've got this little leftover empty table from where we use that to create the measures table in the data model. You can do something like right click delete and just throw this whole thing away. So to move those measures to this new measures table, we'll go up to the power pivot ribbon, go to measures, manage measures. Here's total cost and total sales. I'll go to total cost, choose edit. And in the table name from the top, I'll switch that from sales to measures. Hit okay. Do the same thing for total sales, edit change the table name from sales to measures. Hit OK, close that, and we can see that measures table over on the right with those two measures having been migrated from sales to measures. Notice this warning about relationships between the tables may be needed. Going back into the data model, if we switch to the diagram view, measures is a little data island. Now sales technically is a data island because this is not a very complex model, but since there are no relationships between these two tables, Excel thinks that's a problem and wants you to create relationships. But remember, you don't create relationships between measures and normal data fields. So to suppress this message, if you go back to Manage Data Model, we'll switch over to the Measures table, which is empty other than the measures here at the bottom. And if we go to the only column in this table, go to the column heading and right-click and choose Hide from Client Tools, we're going to hide that column. Now that hides the column, but it doesn't hide the measures in that table. If we close out of the data model view, that Excel notification is suppressed. Now there is a downside to doing this. Let me switch it back real quick. I'll go back to manage, go to that first column, right click, unhide from client tools, and then go back into Excel. So now we've got that notification again. When you create new measures, you can of course go up to the ribbon, go to measures and say new measure, but a very convenient way to create a new measure is to go to the table that you wanna place the measure in, right click and just choose add measure. But if I go back into my data model, hide that first column back into Excel, the right click no longer works. And that might be a deal breaker for you. So if you wanna create any new measures, you have to go up to the ribbon to measures and choose new measure. 
Also remember, because measures was not the first table in the data model, the default save location is sales. And if you forget to change this to the measures table, which oftentimes happens, and you go in here and write a measure like profit, you'll end up placing profit in the wrong table. So profit might be the total sales minus the total cost. And I'll format it as a currency with two decimal place precision. And then I could add profit to my pivot table. Remember I had said earlier that the best practice is to create the measures table before you add any other tables to your data model. So here in this file, all I have is the sales table. To create that empty measures table, just click any empty cell that's not directly next to something like a table, control C to copy, on the power pivot ribbon, we'll go to manage, and then we'll just hit paste. This prompts us for a table name. I'll call this underscore measures, hit okay. Now I have a measures table. Getting back into Excel, I'll just hit escape, and now I'll go to my data and I'll add this to my data model. Now I have two tables, the sales table and an empty measures table. Back in Excel, I want to create a pivot table from the data in the data model. So I'll go up to insert pivot table from data model. I'll place the pivot table on a new worksheet. You can see the sales table that has the data fields and the empty measures table, which has that empty column. Now I'll hide that, but before I do, I wanna take advantage of being able to right click on the measures table and choose add measure. By the way, if you had gone up to the power pivot ribbon and chose measures, new measure, notice that the default location for saving that measure is the measures table because it was created first in the data model. So we'll create a new measure here called total cost, and that measure will be the sum of the cost field. And now I've got a total cost measure in my measures table. Alternatively, I could right click on the measure table name, choose add measure. This one will be called total sales, and it will be the sum of the sales field. And I'll format that with a currency style, two decimal places. Lastly, I'll go to measures, right click add measure, create a measure called profit, and profit will be the total sales minus the total cost. Formatted as currency, two decimal places. Now, if you don't wanna see that empty dead column and you don't mind losing the whole right click add measure feature, we could always go back up to manage and then go to the heading of that empty column, right click, hide from client tools, get out of power pivot. And now we have a dedicated measures table with nothing but measures. So I'll add product to the rows. I'm going to remove total costs from the pivot table and add total sales and profit. And that is how we create a dedicated measures table in Power BI and also in Excel's Power Pivot data model. So take your existing files, give those measures a new home, create new measures, organize them, and just make working with data models a little bit easier. Remember to download these files from the link in the video's description so you can practice. And then once you're comfortable, go back and retrofit all your existing Power BI creations and just make them a little bit better. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel because remember at BCTI, the learning never stops.